common pigeon diseases and their treatment. Canker. Trichomoniasis, commonly known as canker, is the most prevalent disease among racing pigeons. While most pigeons are infested with canker at some point in their lives, mature birds often do not show symptoms of the disease. However, stress can trigger severe growth of trichomonads, leading to canker and affecting the pigeon's health. Signs of canker include ruffled feathers, weight loss, loss of appetite, increased water intake, and reluctance to fly. Canker can be transmitted easily among pigeons, especially during transportation when they share water sources. Treatment involves the use of medications like ronidazole, cancerix, Trico Plus, 4-in-1 Medpit, and local medicine. Paramyxovirus, vaccinate young birds at 25 to 35 days old before weaning paramyxovirus, also known as PMV1, is a highly contagious viral infection specific to pigeons. It spreads through direct or indirect contact with infected birds, contaminated feed, water, or litter. Symptoms include loose droppings, lack of appetite, ruffled feathers, poor coordination, and paralysis. Vaccination with the main biological oil adjuvant PMV1 vaccine is effective in preventing paramyxovirus. The La Soda vaccine, commonly used for Newcastle disease, is not effective against PMV1. Preventive measures include strict biosecurity practices, vaccinating pigeons, and limiting contact with wild birds. Respiratory infection. Respiratory infections such as mycoplasmosis, catarrh, and ornithosis are bacterial diseases that affect the upper respiratory tract of pigeons. Symptoms include mucus in the throat, open beak, heavy breathing, watery discharge from the eyes, and respiratory problems. Maintaining proper loft ventilation, controlling dust and ammonia levels, and preventing overcrowding and dampness can help prevent and control respiratory infections. Medications like vetricin gold, galamycin, doxytai, mocus powder, and local medicine can be used for treatment. Coccidiosis. Coccidiosis is a highly infectious disease caused by a protozoan that infects the intestines of pigeons. Young pigeons and those exposed to stress are most susceptible. Symptoms include loss of appetite, puffiness, lethargy, watery droppings, and weight loss. To prevent coccidiosis, it is important to maintain a dry and sanitary loft, avoid contact with contaminated water and droppings, and isolate new birds. Medications such as Sulmet, Belmet, Noxal, 4-in-1 Medbit, and local medicine can be used for treatment. E. coli. E. coli, also known as colobacillus, is a bacterial infection prevalent in pigeons. It spreads through infected dust particles, rodent droppings, and contact with infected pigeon droppings. Symptoms vary depending on the affected body part and may include weight loss, loose and mucousy droppings, and respiratory problems. Maintaining good loft hygiene, keeping rodents away from feed and water, and controlling dust and ammonia levels can help prevent E. coli infections. Medications such as amoxicillinum, 4-in-1 medpit, feraltadone 20%, and local medicine can be used for treatment. Adenovirus infections in pigeons. Adenovirus infections in pigeons can be classified into two types, adenovirosis I, classical adenovirosis, and adenovirosis II, necrotizing hepatitis. While adenovirosis I mainly affects young pigeons, adenovirosis II can also occur in older pigeons. The latter form is more severe and can result in significant mortality among the older birds. These two diseases have become major infections in pigeon populations worldwide. To understand and combat these diseases, it is crucial to explore their causes, symptoms, and possible prevention and treatment options. Adenovirosis I primarily affects young pigeons and is often introduced into a loft through contact with infected pigeons or contaminated travel baskets. The virus damages the intestinal wall allowing other harmful bacteria to proliferate and enter the bloodstream. Typical symptoms include sudden-onset vomiting, diarrhea, general weakness, and a rapid spread of infection among the young birds. Although the disease usually lasts for a short period, 5-10 to 10 days, additional E. coli infections can prolong the illness. Treating these secondary infections promptly is crucial for effective recovery. Pigeons that recover from adenovirosis I may require some time to fully regain their health. Adenovirosis too, on the other hand, is a more severe form of the disease that affects both young and old pigeons. It causes massive liver necrosis, leading to rapid death in affected birds. Symptoms include vomiting, yellow diarrhea, and a high mortality rate. Interestingly, pigeons that survive an adenovirosis 2 infection develop immunity, showing no symptoms upon re-exposure to the virus. Unfortunately, no efficient treatment or vaccination is currently available for either form of adenovirosis. Prevention involves maintaining hygiene, proper ventilation, and avoiding overcrowding to minimize the risk of infection.
One-eyed colds and pigeons. One-eyed colds and pigeons are typically associated with physical injuries or pecs to the eye. They can often be confused with the early stages of mycoplasmosis. The most common symptom is the presence of watery or mucousy discharge in one eye, although both eyes can be affected. In severe cases, the infected eye may become completely shut. To prevent one-eyed colds, it is essential to maintain proper ventilation, avoid overcrowding, and minimize dust levels in the loft. Medications such as Forma drops or Lysacura drops can be used to treat the infection locally. Paratyphoid, salmonellosis, in pigeons. Paratyphoid, also known as salmonellosis, is a widespread disease caused by a gram-negative bacterium. It can be introduced into a loft through infected pigeons, rodents, contaminated dust, footwear, roaches, or contact with wild pigeons. Symptoms of paratyphoid vary but commonly include rapid weight loss, loose greenish droppings, swelling in the leg joints or feet, wing boils, and respiratory issues. Baby pigeons may die in the nest or exhibit labored breathing. Loft hygiene, regular cleaning and disinfection, minimizing contact with potential carriers, and maintaining an acidic pH level in the loft are critical for preventing paratyphoid. Vaccination and medications like Theraprim, Doxicle, and local treatments are available for treatment. Pigeon pox. Pigeon pox is caused by a virus that is commonly carried by mosquitoes and other biting insects. When a non-resistant pigeon is bitten by an infected insect, the virus enters the bird's bloodstream. Within five to seven days, small whitish wart-like lesions appear on the head, feet, legs, and beak areas. These lesions can grow into large yellowish bumps, but it is advisable not to remove them as they will eventually dry and fall off. The best way to prevent pigeon pox is through regular vaccination. Controlling mosquito and fly populations around the loft can also be helpful. Vaccines and local medications are available for treatment. Pigeon malaria. Pigeon malaria is caused by a protozoan that attacks the red blood cells of pigeons. It is primarily transmitted by pigeon flies, which act as the immediate host. Symptoms of pigeon malaria are often vague, including loss of gloss in plumage and reduced performance in racing events. To prevent pigeon malaria, it is crucial to control pigeon flies, as they are the primary carriers of the disease. Quarantining newly acquired birds, dusting or dipping birds after contact with others, and avoiding contact with wild pigeons are essential preventive measures. Curing this disease is challenging. Medications such as Aralin water-soluble tablets and Ava's malaria powder, as well as local treatments, can be used for treatment. Sour crop. Sour crop, also known as congeda or thrush, is a common disease caused by a fungal infection in the digestive tract. It is often associated with the excessive use of antibiotics. Symptoms of sour crop include listlessness, loss of appetite, weight loss, a water-filled crop, frequent vomiting, and putrid smelling vomit. Maintaining proper loft hygiene, avoiding overcrowding, and using antibiotics judiciously can help prevent sour crop. Medications like Digestal, Probios, HealthGuard, and local probiotics can be used for treatment. Worm diseases. The most common types of worms found in pigeons include roundworms, hairworms, stomach wall worms, gape worms, strongly lids, and tapeworms. Symptoms of worm infestations vary, but they can include droopiness, weight loss, and diarrhea. Gape worms can cause breathing problems. Regular cleaning and maintaining a sanitary loft is crucial for preventing worm infestations. Implementing a preventative worming program, where all birds are wormed at least twice a year, is advisable. Medications like in and out moxidectin, ivermectin, and local worming medications can be used for treatment. External parasites. Common external parasites that affect pigeons include feather lice, red mites, pigeon flies, and mosquitoes. Feather lice primarily damage feathers, while red mites hide in the loft during the day and feed on the bird's blood at night, potentially spreading diseases. Pigeon flies are dangerous parasites that live on pigeons and can cause discomfort and transmit diseases like pigeon malaria. Mosquitoes are carriers of pigeon pox virus. Controlling external parasites involves quarantining new birds, using pesticides to dust or dip birds, and maintaining a clean loft environment. Medications like feather lice dust, malathion, tobacco stalks, washout solutions, and local sprays can be used for treatment. Pigeon diarrhea. Pigeon diarrhea can occur after medication treatments, causing loose droppings due to a chemical imbalance in the digestive system caused by the loss of friendly bacteria. Medications like Digestal, Probios, HealthGuard, and local probiotics can help restore the balance and treat pigeon diarrhea. Loose droppings. Loose droppings in pigeons indicate an issue within the digestive system. They can be caused by viruses, adenovirus, circovirus, 
PMV, or pox, bacteria, salmonella, E. coli, worm infestations, over-medication, or excessive racing slash training. Normal droppings should be firm, brownish in color with a white tip. Loose droppings can appear mushy, slimy, watery, lime green, dark green, or yellow, each indicating a potential health issue that requires attention. Please note that this information is for informational purposes only, and it's always recommended to consult a veterinarian for accurate diagnosis and treatment of pigeon health issues. There are many reasons to buy my racing pigeon method. Here are some of the best reasons. You will get excellent results, it's a very simple system to use, it's affordable, I have had over 400 first prize winners, it's adaptable to any situation. You can use it with any racing method, natural, widowhood, young birds, it's a very effective method. There is no need to spend a lot of money on fancy pigeon products, it's a reliable system and it is foolproof to use. Professional athletes, race horses, take the same products, there is science behind this not just hearsay, it is all to do with red blood cells and oxygen in the blood, without that a pigeon will not race well, or an athlete will not win a race, if he has low oxygen in his blood, the above is fact and is 100% science. There are a few things you can do to improve your chances of winning at racing pigeons. One of the most important things is to learn as much as you can about the sport. You'll need to know the different types of pigeons, how to train them, and how to race them. Another key factor is practice. You'll need to be able to fly your pigeons competently in order to win races. And, of course, you'll need to have the funds to invest in racing pigeons and other racing equipment. 